Next at four, two young boys fall out of a moving vehicle in Sheboygan, and their father doesn't even notice what their dad's accused of doing for the fifth time, plus a witness tells us who came to the toddler's rescue. I'm Tess Klein, Live at Four is next. Right now, from Milwaukee, this is today's TMJ4, Live at Four. Today on Live at Four, a Sheboygan dad arrested for his fifth OWI in child neglect. Officers caught up with him after they found out his two young boys fell out of his van. Kristen Byrne talked to a woman who witnessed it all. She joins us with the latest. Kira Voigt was coming home from work. She lives in this upstairs apartment feet from where a one-year-old and three-year-old fell out of a moving 10-passenger van last night. I thought one of the cars like was going to actually hit the kid and then a car, a guy with, in a green car jumped out and actually grabbed the kids and got him off the road. Voigt never saw the big van. That's because police say the driver drove off after his kids fell out. He told police he wasn't even aware it happened. In this case, we suspect that there's probably maybe some medications uh, involved. Uh, therefore, uh, it might not just be alcohol related. Police arrested the dad at his house for his fifth OWI, child neglect and more. Both toddlers were taken to the hospital. One of them, police say, had a skull fracture. I hope he does get charged. I really do, and I hope CPS gets involved. Two people are dead after a single car accident in Sheboygan. Around 9.30 this morning, police say a 46-year-old man slammed into a tree near 10th in Georgia. The driver and one, and one of three of his passengers died in the crash. Police say a woman and four-year-old child were taken to the hospital. Both are expected to be okay. Police are still investigating the cause of the crash. Storm Team 4 now, three days in the 70s and 80s, and two weeks ago we were shoveling snow. But it might be hard to sleep tonight. Meteorologist Brian Goddard joins us with the weather. Tess, the weather's been crazy of late. You said the warm and humid air, and now we're seeing thunderstorms firing up. This line from the Dells down towards Dodgeville, and we actually have a warning now just southwest of Madison. This line is moving about 60 miles per hour. The main concern, about 60 mile per hour winds and quarter size hail as this moves off to the east. Could be in Milwaukee within the next 90 minutes or so. More activity to the southwest along a cold front. We'll keep an eye on that overnight as well. There's your future forecast. This first batch should be into Milwaukee sometime between 9 and 930 and then more heavy rain and a lot of lightning overnight. Tess. And new at four, one person in California has died from the E. coli outbreak linked to romaine lettuce. The CDC says the romaine was from Yuma, Arizona. This is the first death from the outbreak. 120 cases have been reported since the outbreak. So far, just one here in Wisconsin. A teen in West Allis ran from police, swam through a lagoon, and hid in a tree for hours last night. Police say they were called to a house on 116th Street where the teen was lighting things on fire. The teen ran into Garfield and Park, and officers found him in a tree on an island in the middle of the lagoon. At first, the 15-year-old refused to come down, but eventually did. He was arrested and charged. Milwaukee police have arrested a 19-year-old man for stealing a car at gunpoint. Officers were called to 12th and Mitchell around 8 last night. They said the suspect and victim fought before the car was stolen and a shot was fired. No one was hurt. Police have not released the suspect's name. Right now, Milwaukee police need help locating a car involved in a deadly hit-and-run crash. Here's a stock image of a 90s Buick LeSabre investigators are looking to find. The driver of the car killed a 32-year-old man at 37th and Villard Monday night. If you have any information on the driver or the vehicle in question, call police. A man tells Sheboygan police he was drunk when he met a woman who stole his debit card. Investigators say the woman used the card in Sheboygan and Green Bay. The cardholders bank said they have heard of several scams where women befriend men to steal their debit cards. If you recognize the woman or this vehicle, call police. A school's local budget mistake costing many of the teachers their jobs. Carol Meekins joins us live in the newsroom with a story new on Live at 5.
If you missed the streetcar job fair earlier today, you can catch another hiring event tomorrow. The operator of the streetcar will discuss positions and take applications from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Milwaukee Career Expo. The event is at the State Fair grounds. Salaries for the positions generally range from $40,000 to $65,000. They are looking to hire 30 people for the streetcar operations. Foxconn is hoping its new home in Mount Pleasant will be more than just a factory. Our partners at the Milwaukee Business Journal report Foxconn wants the site to be a hub for innovation and engineering. The company plans to develop state-of-the-art manufacturing practices and sell those practices to other companies across the country. Construction on Foxconn is expected to start in the next few weeks. Heading south on I-94 might take you longer this summer. The Wisconsin Department of D Transportation will start lowering the speed limit in the southbound lanes of I-94 in Racine and Kenosha counties due to construction. The speed reduction will start at County G in Racine and 142 in Kenosha County. Speeds will drop from 70 to 60 miles per hour starting in June. The speed will eventually drop in the northbound lanes, but only after the southbound lanes are done. Ahead on Live at 4, another problem with the Southwest flight, why the jet made an emergency landing. Plus, we have an update on the motorhome chase we showed you yesterday, what police found inside the RV, and the disturbing new information about the driver. You're watching today's TMJ4 with Charles Benson, Shannon Sims, and Storm Team 4 meteorologist Jesse Ritka. The city of Brotherly Love has reached a settlement with the two African-American men arrested by police at a Philly Starbucks. An attorney for the men said they each received a symbolic $1 plus a promise from the city to set up a $200,000 program for young entrepreneurs. Video of their arrest went viral last month after a Starbucks manager called police and stated the men refused to buy anything and would not leave the store. The two men were waiting on a white friend to show up for a meeting. Starbucks says it too has reached a settlement with the men. Police in California are still looking for the man who led them on a low-speed chase in a motorhome. Police say the driver, Stephen Hawk, is, is a registered sex offender. Hawk finally pulled over and an orchard police found the 46-year-old man's two young children inside. The children were reunited with their mother. Hawk was convicted of having sex with a child under the age of 14. Big changes for the Boy Scouts. The century-old organization is dropping the word boy in its name. Starting next February, the program will now be called Scouts BSA. 3,000 girls nationwide are already enrolled in the BSA's Early Adopter Program and are participating ahead of the full launch. Another Southwest Airlines plane had a window break or crack mid-flight. This photo shows a broken window on flight 957. It was en route from Chicago to New York, New Jersey when the window cracked. The plane made an unscheduled landing in Cleveland. There are no reported injuries. The FAA is now expanding its order to inspect fan blades in the engines of Boeing 737 passenger jets. They are requiring some engines to be expected before they hit 20,000 flights. After the 20,000, blades will need to be inspected every 3,000 flights. The move comes in the wake of last month's accident on a Southwest jet that killed one passenger and injured several others. Prosecutors say the man accused in the 2017 Fort Lauderdale airport shooting could avoid the death penalty in exchange for a guilty plea. Authorities say the 26-year-old Iraq war veteran Esteban Santiago confessed to opening fire in the baggage claim area, killing five people and wounding six more. Santiago originally pleaded not guilty to multiple charges in January. The father of one of 17 victims killed in the mass shooting in Parkland, Florida, has filed a wrongful death lawsuit. Andrew Pollock is suing the shooter, Nicholas Cruz, and also the deputy who stayed outside as the attack went down. Pollock's 18-year-old daughter, Meadow, was shot several times trying to save another student's life. I'm fighting for it, for everyone that wants their kids safe at school. I'll rest when, when all those kids are safe. We're in it to bring out the incompetence so we could, have, we could prevent this happening at another school. The lawsuit also names James and Kimberly Sneeds, the couple who took Cruz in after his mother died, saying the Sneeds allowed him to have access to guns. The brother of the accused Parkland High School shooter is back in jail. Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputies arrested Zachary Cruz on Tuesday for violating the terms of his probation. Police say Cruz drove without a valid driver's license and was within 25 feet of the parking lot of a high school. 
Just ahead, drones taking over the sky, the world record they broke, and see the amazing sight. Coming up at 4.30, a bizarre discovery leaving police stumped, the mystery surrounding this dangling car. Need help with a consumer problem? Our call for action volunteers are ready. Call 414-967-5495 or request help online. Just click on the icon on the front page of TMJ4.com. Crews in Kansas are surveying the damage from severe weather last night. These images were captured east of Bennington in central Kansas where a tornado touched down Tuesday evening. Fortunately, no one was hurt and there was a limited amount of damage. Today's forecast calls for more evening thunderstorms. Over 1,300 illuminated drones flew over the city of Xi'an, clinching a world record. The previous world record was set in South Korea at the Winter Olympics. Ahead on Live at 4, a military plane crash in Savannah, Georgia. Five people are dead. What the National Guard says the plane was doing when it went down. Three homes near Cambridge and North damage after a fire this morning. The Milwaukee Fire Department believes the fire started in one home and spread to the others. Everyone was able to get out safely. An official cause is still under investigation. A proposed group home for at-risk kids not going with people living near Metcalf Park. This is the same neighborhood where a 10-year-old girl was gunned down four years ago. The community says this is not the time to bring vulnerable children and teens into an area already struggling with crime. Wheaton Franciscan All Saints Hospital in Racine has received the lowest grade when it comes to safety in the state. Missing G, the mark with the AD grade. The grades were given by Leapfrog, a national nonprofit that looks at safety in U.S. health systems. When it comes to infections, the nonprofit said the hospital performed below average with MRSA, C. diff, and infections after colon surgery. The hospital was given a C grade in the fall. Several employers across the U.S. are no longer testing for marijuana. The drug has been a fixture of testing for employers over the last three decades. Experts say the testing discourages too many potential workers at a time when filling jobs is more challenging. Thanks for joining us today at 4. There's more news ahead on Live at 4.30. Three homes near Cambridge and North damaged after a fire this morning. The Milwaukee Fire Department believes the fire started in one home and spread to the others. Everyone was able to get out safely and an official cause is still under investigation. A proposed group home for at-risk kids not going with the people living near Metcalf Park. This is the same neighborhood where a 10-year-old girl was gunned down four years ago. The community says this is not the time to bring vulnerable children and teens into an area already struggling with crime. Wheaton Franciscan All Saints Hospital in Racine has received the lowest grade when it comes to safety in the state, missing G the mark with AD grade. The grades were given by Leapfrog, a national nonprofit that looks at safety in U.S. health systems. When it comes to infections, the nonprofit said the hospital performed below average with MRSA, C. diff, and infections after colon surgery. The hospital was given a C grade in the fall. Several employers across the U.S. are no longer testing for marijuana. The drug has been a fixture of testing for employers over the last three decades. Experts say the testing discourages too many potential workers at a time when filling jobs is more challenging. Thanks for joining us today at 4. There's more news ahead on Live at 4.30. Right now, from Milwaukee, this is today's TMJ4, live at 4.30. Now at 4.30, at least five service members are dead after a plane crash in southern Georgia. The Air National Guard plane went down during a training mission. NBC's Jay Gray explains why the pilot's actions may have saved lives. The plane crash C-130 went down. There's a large black cloud on the ground. Witnesses say the giant military transport struggled to stay in the air just before the crash. It just like started to the left, slowly going to the left, and it just went upside down on its back. I can see the flames in the air, and from the flames I've seen a lot of black smoke, white smoke on top. The Air National Guard C-130 went down just outside the Savannah Hilton Head International Airport. The plane was attached to a unit in Puerto Rico on a training mission at the time of the crash. 
Tonight, the pilot is being remembered as a hero, steering the plane away from those on the ground, witnesses say, before impact. There were no cars hit in this crash. It is an absolute miracle uh, at that time of day uh, and that intersection. The FAA and the military team have started separate investigations into the deadly crash. Jay Gray, NBC News. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel is looking to move out of its current home. Our partners at the Milwaukee Business Journal report the paper has been on West State Street for many years. When the offices move to another location, the journal says it will sell its corporate offices, which have been assessed at almost $10 million. Also in the Business Journal, Chicago-based Miller Coors says it's having a soft start to the year because it didn't ship enough beer. The company says they could not fulfill wholesale orders fast enough due to issues at a brewery in Golden, Colorado. The company's CEO also said a long and rough winter hurt many of the brands. For your money this afternoon, here's a look now at the markets at the close of the business day. The Dow down 174 points to 23,924. NASDAQ is down 30 to 7,100. The S&P down 19 to 2,635, right across the board. What would Les Paul think? Legendary guitar maker Gibson has filed for bankruptcy. The Nashville, Tennessee-based company now also owns Baldwin Pianos, Gibson Audio, and Wurlitzer, according to the filing. The company has $500 million in debt and will focus on its musical instruments business. Gibson sells more than 170,000 guitars annually over 80 countries. San Jose, California and Seattle, Washington top the list of cities where millennials are finding it toughest to buy a home. Rising real estate prices, low inventory, and heightened demand are to blame for the home buying crunch. Buyers also have the same problems in Salt Lake City, Minneapolis, and Omaha, Nebraska. What remains of the Weinstein Company, once a leading independent movie studio, is slated to be sold. The Weinstein Company filed for bankruptcy earlier this year after Harvey Weinstein was accused of years of sexual misconduct and harassment of women. The Dallas firm Lantern Entertainment is poised to buy the assets for $310 million. If you need a phone number, say for pizza delivery, most of us just Google it. But don't do that with Facebook or Amazon. Consumer reporter John Matarisi warns that scammers may try to take advantage of you, so don't waste your money. Let's say you have a problem with an Amazon order, or maybe there's an issue with your Amazon Prime account, and you need help. But watch out. Scammers are ready to take advantage and steal your account info. If you have a problem with a Walmart or Home Depot order, you Google their customer service line and give them a call. But be careful with Amazon. The website The Daily Scam says fraudsters are posting fake Amazon customer support phone numbers that then show up in a Google search. The real number is 888-280-4331. But most 800 numbers for Amazon are fake. And from the dozen that stink file, what can happen if you fall for an Amazon customer support scam? The Daily Scam says if you call one of the toll-free numbers that may pop up, you'll get a man who says he works for Amazon and who asks for your account number and password. Give that info, you'll say, doesn't that stink? Be careful Googling any major company's phone number. Scammers post fake numbers for Facebook, Microsoft, and Apple as well. Your best bet for dealing with Amazon is through the site itself and their customer feedback section. Don't try to call them with 100 million Prime customers they can't talk to on the phone. So be careful and don't waste your money. I'm John Battery Stays, TMJ4. Parents furious after they say teachers took the school's dress code too far. It's a story new on Live at 6. Local middle school girls lined up because of what they wore to school, but that's not the only thing that has parents upset. What the school did next. That's coming up on Live at 6. Remember the old J.C. Penney's downtown Kenosha? Leaders are putting all their energy into transforming the pair of vacant buildings for more than a decade. A developer can dream up anything they'd like as long as the first floor is commercial. The executive director of Downtown Kenosha, Inc. says they're already off to a good start. Within the past year, I'd say probably 12 contacts at least with developers for this area. Leaders from all over Kenosha County also plan to talk to investors in Las Vegas later about the opportunities this month. Ahead on Live at 430, do you know what your kids are drinking? We're not talking about alcohol. Up next, a dentist explains the dangers of hidden sugars in many popular drinks.
Dash cam video shows a tanker truck careen into several telephone poles in Massachusetts. The driver says a bird flew into the truck's cab, causing him to swerve. Police aren't buying it, though. The driver was cited for reckless driving. A train runs off its tracks in Kentucky, causing several explosions. Officials are still investigating what caused the train to derail. They think the explosions were triggered in, by gas in cars being carried on the train. Luckily, no one was hurt. Police in Toronto left scratching their heads after this car was found dangling from a rope under a bridge. They have no idea how it got there. It looks like something from a movie, but police say no permits were issued for such a stunt. Firefighters were eventually called in to drop the car safely to the ground. Thanks for joining us for Live at 4.30. There's more news ahead on Live at 5.